So, Pap, as I was saying uh, before uh, before we got on air, I am uh, very excited. I am headed on vacation. Um, in fact, tomorrow morning it starts. I'm going to the beach. And uh, I got to say, I, I want to talk to you about Abilify. I also want to talk about what's going on with the the theories behind holding opioid manufacturers accountable. But I got to say, I'm sitting here with a copy. It is a... Um, it is an, an edit proof only because it's not out yet, but I have my Law and Vengeance uh, copy, the, your second uh, book of uh, the, the, a thriller, a legal thriller that I'm going to be bringing to the beach, and I'm psyched to read it. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll t I'd love to talk to you just a little bit about themes because I've interviewed people. Uh, who, you know, talk about these themes that take place in real life, uh, the, the failure of, of our uh, government to uh, prosecute white-collar uh, criminals, and then uh, simultaneously the uh, problem of our government uh, pursuing whistleblowers, particularly under the Obama administration, uh, in a way that we haven't really ever seen in, in this country. Um, these are themes that you bring into uh, to law and vengeance. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea of the book is is when I started doing the series of books, this is number two in a series of four books. The third one is about the opioid uh, crisis, and the fourth one is about uh, banks washing money for terrorists. Um, and so this one, folk, and, and they all, by the way, uh, are centered around actual cases that that I handle and our law firm handles. But this one centers around uh, the, uh, a, true, a true case. It was a manufacturer that made a, uh, a, a gun sight, both for pistols and rifles, that, uh, that unfortunately was a disaster. It uh, was defective. They knew it was defective. They um, actually, the, the gun sight would work in perfect conditions. It would work, uh, but if you put it out in the heat, Humidity and heat would cause it to be off several degrees every hundred yards, and a lot of people were, you know, it cost cost a lot of lives because of it. So that's a case we handled, and it be, it it builds around the the um, the same characters that came out in the first book, Law and Disorder. They just are on to a different case now, and it, this one's a little the 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 severity and the threat and the the danger is 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 really turned up in this because it, it involves uh, it it involves a police union who is mandating the use of these and in the process of getting kickbacks, uh, and it involves one of the biggest weapons uh, manufacturers in the world. So uh, so Nick Dicotomas and the characters in that book are. Uh, are, are under pretty heavy pressure. Gina Romano is the is the key trial lawyer in that. She's a experienced uh, criminal, uh, white collar criminal defense lawyer, and so she's been thrown in the middle of this case because a couple of uh, her partners were killed. So I think it's uh, I think it's a story you're going to like, Sam. I mean, hopefully you'll read it. The goal of all these books is be able to read it and then come away after you read it being entertained, but also learning something. For example, you you mentioned. Uh, the Department of Justice and what a miserable job they've done actually going after, uh, you know, for a, a, taking care of whistleblowers and B, really throwing anybody in jail. I mean, it's one thing to find a multi-billion dollar corporation, you know, find them $500 million. Uh, they made that, you know, in a month. Right. And these are multi, multi-billion corporations. And the Department of Justice has evolved into this thing to where unless it, 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 you don't go to jail unless you're wearing a hoodie. If you're wearing an Armani suit, uh, if you're wearing, uh, you know, driving around in a Bentley and uh, have a Rolex watch on, you don't go to you, you don't go to prison. You simply pay a fine for your fraud, for your crime that results in the death of human beings. But if you're wearing a hoodie. And you're out on uh, the street selling a couple ounces of marijuana, baby. You better hold on because you're you're going to prison. Right. I mean, if you play cards right, maybe they make you treasury secretary yeah, instead you, of prosecuting it, you for uh, you know for running a foreclosure. A scam, uh, yeah. A mill. I mean, let me ask you this: Is it? I mean, and and, and then I, I want to talk about Abilify, but. Is there a certain amount of liberation for you? Because I know there's a lot of cases that you have. I've spoken to, obviously, uh, a lot of attorneys. We go to um, the, uh, the Mass Torts Conference uh, twice a year, and I speak to a lot of attorneys about a lot of these different cases. Uh, and sometimes when they settle, 
uh, or uh, sometimes, uh, you know, they've seen things that are that are sealed, uh, that they've seen in discovery. Is this liberating for you to be able to talk about things? Obviously, you can't tell the exact facts. Well, you can talk about dynamics that must be um, that, that you've been probably, I would imagine, you tell me, dying to, to, to articulate. Yeah, the public. it is. That's, a, that's a, an excellent point, Sam. It's not just when you try a case and get a remarkable result and, you know, you don't, even though the bad guys don't go to prison, you're able to tell the story, the public, if the if corporate media takes time to actually cover the stories, which though they so infrequently do, they they you know if they give it two or three paragraphs, it's usually not enough. But but yeah, it is liberating because you these books allow me to talk about <clears throat> the intricacies, for example, of the Department of Justice. That you know people come away with the Obama administration, for example, thinking, oh well, Eric Holder was great, or Loretta Lynch, she was really one of us. Well, no, they weren't. They were just the opposite. They have nothing in common with you. They have nothing in common with the typical American. Eric Holder comes from Covington, Burling, for example. He ran the Department of Justice, and he always sided with white-collar criminals, both when he was in private practice, and he's back with the same firm, by the way, now defending white-collar criminals again. But when he was Department of Justice, it was so dysfunctional because he would be in front of the camera, and everybody said, oh, wow, you know, Eric Holder fined the company $250 million, and wow, that's spectacular. Well, no. Often it was times that were companies actually made products that killed people. They made a pharmaceutical that poisoned a liver or a kidney or a heart, and people died. And so you've got him, or or, or Wall Street that stole money <clears throat> from mom and pop pension programs. And Eric Holder would say, "Well, we really hit, uh, you know, we really hit J.P. Morgan, baby." Well, no, the 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 people lost everything. They lost their entire life savings. They committed suicide. They became ill to the point to where they, their lives never recovered. And so we think, oh, yeah, he was really one of us. No, he wasn't. And neither was Loretta Lynch. And Obama knew exactly what was going on because that's those are the people that really supported him. I mean, they... Um, and so, it, yeah, it is liberating to tell these stories in the book because, you know, you'll take a progressive that may read the book and, and all of a sudden they're going, wow, I, I didn't know all that. Well, it's the truth. And so I, I think all these books that I'm writing right now, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, Abilify, you know, that that's a story that people you almost can't believe. <laughs> it's a story where the company uh, is it's a case that's pending right now where, you know, the company, the documents say we whitewashed the clinical data. We whitewashed the story, and the story is that the, the drug is so powerful that if, that affects the impulse center of the brain. And we have cases where people that have never gambled in their life all of a sudden show up on an Indian reservation gambling and, 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 and have literally gambled their entire, everything they own away, including their house and their car. Those are not uncommon kinds of cases. That, and, and you know what? They admit it. I mean, Abilify, the, the manufacturers now, uh, they, they admit it over in Europe. They, they warn about it over in Europe that the impulse control problem is a disaster. But they don't uh, in the United States. And so this so so but but that type of conduct, that was Bristol Myers Squibb that handled that right. that case. But that type of conduct from corporate America is not an exception anymore. It's the norm. And um, so it's fun to write those books because of that. 